Hi guys, my name is Marcel. Okay. All right, as you guys know, I do actually read your comments a lot, and I'm well aware of what you all want. Today's finally the day. You're getting a video on how to shade faces from the very, very start, even if you're like an absolute beginner. And after this video, you'll also understand how I'm shading the faces in my artwork, since that's something a lot of people on Instagram are asking for. Safe to say what I'm showing you in this video works for real, actual portrait faces, but also more stylized drawings like anime and manga. The only thing you should know is how to draw a face in the first place. If you don't, you're better off watching this video that I've made about drawing an easy human face first, because otherwise this whole shading thing here will be one massive headache to you. As always, you are in for a treat. I've spent weeks on making and editing this video, and if you would leave a like, I would really appreciate it, so that all of this hard work just wasn't for nothing. Now, as you just saw, I will use a reference model for this video, which is like I use in, well, most of my videos, you know, to make things a bit simpler. But I also use them personally to double check things like hands and more complicated stuff when I'm drawing or painting my artwork. I mostly use tools and apps that actually cost money, but if you want to have a free tool, you can take a look at JustSketch.me. They were kind enough to sponsor today's video. It's got the bare basics you would need in case you struggle with perspective or proportions, and if you use my link, you could use it forever, for free. Just make sure to use my link, I've pinned it down in the comments for you guys to click. Just like you would expect from a tool like that, there's even a way to customize tiny details like the hand position and so on. It's pretty helpful if you're setting up a scene for a storyboard or your own manga, and there are tons of artists using it already. Like I said, this tool is free to use in case you're looking for an app that doesn't cost anything, but if you want to get the pro version, you can even get access to more advanced models like fantasy creatures, stylized bodies like chibis, basically any animal you can think of, items like melee weapons, decoration, and so much more. They also offer free licenses for teachers or for art classes. I think that's just awesome. And check them out. The website's name is justsketch.me. And yeah, it also works directly on your phone. Okay, enough talking for now. Let's shade some faces. Like a sir. All right, I'm now going to explain this whole light shadow thing in the easiest way possible so that everyone gets it. Let's explain it with a simple object, like a dice, for example. Now you have your light source from over here, and that's important. Always be aware where the light is coming from. And this light source now lights some of the planes of the dice up, and the planes facing away get darker and darker. So far, I think everybody's still on board, right? Because if you understand this, that's basically all you need. Because we can now apply this very same logic to a face. You guys know from my videos that I like to simplify everything in order to understand it, so let's simplify this face right here. This is now basically a human face with the simplicity of a dice. Now let's give it a shot. Let's do a simple lighting setup just like before. You have one light that hovers from above. And just like before, you see the light hits the head and it gets weaker and weaker as it goes on. The nose, however, is an exception. Since, you know, the nose sticks out, it's also hit by the light. Here you can see it in a side view. People tend to forget little details like this, but rest assured, it's an important detail nonetheless. So now you know the theory to this shot, but how would this actually look in practice? How would you draw this? I prepared a sketch of a bald head in order to show you how this would work. Something that could help you out is to pencil in the borders between light and shadow very lightly with a pencil. You know, just to keep things a bit more overseeable. Now I'm shading with a pencil here, but you could do the very same thing digitally or with watercolors or with any other medium you like to draw with. Now I'll just use a pencil and keep it black and white in order to keep things simple. What I like to do here is to shade in the direction the light is coming from. That's one of the little things you notice in a lot of artworks once you're actually aware of it, and I think it's a very pleasing detail to incorporate into your own drawings. I also kind of forgot to mention it, by the way, you can also draw along here if you wanna. It's always good to get more muscle memory, so if you want to, you can rewind, pause and draw along step by step. Okay, and that's the finished shading. Let's compare this to the simplified face from before. 
obviously I didn't shade the light parts at all. The darker parts do have some very deep hatching, but there are also some in-between parts. These are the transition between light and dark. Now I just used some very light strokes in order to draw this transition, but this really depends on the medium you're painting with. For example, with black and white hatching, you're using lighter and lighter strokes for a smoother transition. With watercolor, you could use a wet and wet technique for a smooth transition, and with digital art, uh, you're using a soft brush. I guess most of you are also just working with pencils or liners here, and in case you do, you can learn how to draw proper transitions by watching my video about this very topic. In this video, I explain how I'm hatching my artworks, so in case you're stuck here and you would need some help, this could maybe help you out. Now, this shading right here wasn't very complicated. After all, I just kept it simple with two light spots and one big dark area. Now let's get a bit more advanced. So let's take a look at a more difficult angle like this one. With this, the light isn't just coming straight from above or from the right. Instead, it's coming at a rather realistic angle like the sun would in real life. That's why this shading here looks so much more realistic, because we can see this kind of shadow in everyday life. Now, drawing this ain't so easy anymore, huh? But if you actually went ahead and watched my video on faces, you pretty much know all of the intricacies of a face already. So if you already have knowledge on how to draw a face, you have a big advantage here. My favorite example of this are the cheekbones. So are you up for a challenge? Then alright, let's draw this more advanced version as well. I sketched out another bald person, this time though I decided to draw from an actual real life human, so that I can show you how this would work on, you know, an actual human face. If you want to, though, you can just draw a blank face, just as before, if you want to draw something a bit more easy. Okay, so obviously your nose throws a shadow, and another common one are both of your eye sockets. I think most of you know these very common shading spots. The cheekbone though is something people tend to neglect, mostly because they forget about it and they just don't know how to incorporate it, or maybe they just aren't aware of this shading spot. And lastly, your lips. The upper lip throws a shadow, and the lower lip also throws a shadow. And also, also, don't forget about the neck, because your whole head is also throwing one big shadow. Just like last time, I went ahead and lightly marked all of these shading spots with a light pencil, just so I don't screw up horribly like I usually do half of the time before I cry myself to sleep. Sorry. Let's shade. Don't forget to actually shade into the right direction where the light is coming from, though. It doesn't have to be perfect, I just wanted to mention it. And yeah, I'm actually drawing Watson White here, because A, he's bald, just like our reference model, and B, I'm watching Breaking Bad at the moment. I actually post some of my scribbles on social media from time to time, so if you want to take a look at more stuff I draw in my sketchbooks, you can follow me there. Alright, done. This works just like before, right? <laughs> well, earlier I said that this is going to be a bit more advanced. So this time we're not only differentiating between black and white, but we're also taking a look at the nuances. Look a bit closer. The shadow on our model isn't just all black, there's a lot of nuance here. As you can see on the eyes, these shadows are not all equally dark. Some spots are darker and some are brighter. So try to look out for the darkest spot on these shadows, like um, for example this spot on the eye socket right here. It's a lot darker than the rest, right? Now this means you should also add some more shadow into your art on the very same spot, just so it's accurate. For the darker spots though, I'm not just drawing into the direction of the light again. Instead, I will draw along the curve of this object. In this case, the eye socket. This just gives it more of a 3D feeling. There are also some more deeper shadows in this reference model, like for example under the nose or under the other eye socket. Well, let's take a look at the final artwork now. You have the lightest part, one that I didn't shade at all, the greyish parts that I shaded a little as a transition, and the darker parts that I shaded. Additionally, there are the black parts that I shaded multiple times. And you guessed it, the key to making your art more detailed is to try and draw all of these different nuances. I've done so quite a couple of times myself, it's pretty fun to do, but also pretty time consuming at the same time. Alright then, let's take a look at the final lesson. 
A lot of you guys draw in a stylized fashion, like cartoon, anime, manga, and you still might have problems with shading these kind of faces. I know precisely how that feels. Sometimes it's even easier for me to paint real life portraits of actual humans rather than some original manga artwork, because you kinda need to come up with everything by yourself. Okay now, for stylization we need to change some things. Let's take this setup right here. It's a pretty common one, because it's one of the easiest shadings you could have. Now with a stylized cell shaded style this would still look a bit too realistic. What we're going to do now is to increase the contrast, meaning we're ignoring all nuances and are just looking out for black and white. No in-betweens, no grays. Now obviously this isn't perfect looking, but it's a pretty good guideline on how to shade your art. Now something that most of you probably won't shade are the cheekbones, unless you're drawing a Jojo character or like Giga Chat. Okay then, let's ignore the cheekbones for this one and let's give it a shot. Here's a drawing from one of my characters out of my manga series and as you can see there's still no shading here, so let's shade this one together. I'm basically just copying the same shadow areas here. Cell shading is a very simple style to shade in because you can basically ignore all the nuances. You're just going for black and white. And now everything that's still left to do is to fill out these black spots. The most important part here is to always keep thinking in 3D. A lot of artists forget to shade facial features as actual three-dimensional objects. Here's an artwork that I painted last year and by actually thinking in a 3D fashion I figured out that lights coming from below and it would hit the chin and the lower part of the lips and obviously the nose and so on. And by highlighting and shading these things just like they were real 3D objects your artwork becomes so much more believable. You should definitely keep this attention to detail because after all it's the details that make your artwork pop. And that's the stylized part, just in case you're not quite sure on how to color these artworks or which color to pick for your shadows, there's a video about that topic on my channel already, in case you're drawing in an anime style. Before we end out the video though, like always I've made you guys a cheat sheet which could help you out if you forget some things. Screenshotting this doesn't come free though, the payment would be a like, or a comment, or subscribing to this channel, <laughs> your choice. By the way, I also want to thank William Nguyen, the one who made this amazing 3D reference model. I actually wanted to make this model myself, but making this video was so much work, borrowing this model here was a big weight off my shoulders. You can view his model yourself, it's linked in the info box, I seriously recommend it. Also, if you want to advance your shading even further with fancy rim light and whatnot, there's a video about this topic on my channel as well. It's on screen right now. Thank you so much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you guys next lesson.